I've lived in the valley since 1960. I came here at six years old. I've lived in the Alberni Valley almost all my life. I came here when I was six months old. Let's go find some chicks. And it's a wonderful place to live. It's a good time to be alive in a big and prosperous land. And it's a good time to be young in a small and prosperous town. I was a lot younger in those days. <laughs> we were very comfortable in town. But the people actually making the film, young in a small town, they had a larger scope than what we saw. There is a two transporter loads of brand new cars coming to this town a week. $4,000, $4,000, jobs. A guy gets a job in the mill, the first thing he does is go down to a garage and order his car. Companies were growing, industry was growing, the sawmills, pulp mills, logging. 16 years old, you're in the mill and uh, making really good money, making the same money your parents were. Turned around and bought a car. You see up at the high school, they showed the teacher's parking lot and there was a few old Volkswagens and rattle traps. Then they showed the student's parking lot with a convertible, a hot rod. I believe the show stretched things a little bit. We weren't quite as haywire as some of it depicted. I still have friends that I met because of the cars and what was happening back then. The first thing that comes out of their mouth is, you still got your car? And, yep. 1956 Chevy Bel Air, bought it back in 1972. One fender was brown, another, the hood was blue, and another fender was green. When we drag race down Third Avenue, um, I could take on a lot of newer muscle cars and still blow their doors off. Basically, over the years, I've just been tinkering with it, getting everything back into the shape I want it. And it really turns heads. You know, I guess it's a link to, uh, to the past of what uh, we got away with. <laughs> Deluxe cheeseburger, okay. fries, extra ketchup. So you picked up Kathy here before? When you first started going out? Wayne Walker and I mm -hmm. were cruising and Wayne said, hey, let's pick him up. So we chased after him, picked him up. Uh, the Gibson girl jumped in front with Wayne, oh, yeah. so Kathy was stuck in back with me. Uh -huh. And I've been stuck with her ever since. <laughs> <laughs> History. Yeah. We were very, very fortunate. If we wanted it, we could work for it and go in. Where today, things have backed off so far, we've lost in the neighborhood of 10,000 jobs in the Alberni Valley. It would be very difficult for a young fellow to go buy a brand spanking new car. The mill jobs, the logging jobs aren't there anymore for them. You know, the youngest guys in the mill are 45, 50, 55 years old. Those are the young ones in there. The mills were made for old growth, high grade type wood. Now all that's left is small stuff. And those trees will not come back within the next 50 or so years. Sure, we've gone downhill a heck of a lot. We used to be one of the highest wage earners in North America and the highest in Canada. People are realizing that the mills aren't coming back, the logging isn't going to be like it was. But the valley has survived those losses and it's gradually coming back up. It's, it's a virtual untapped resource. Geez, just right out my back door, it just takes five minutes and I can go do all this stuff. I can go kayaking, I can go canoeing, I can go boating, I can go hiking. And so people are starting little businesses to cater to that. The Alberti Inlet is known around the world as one of the safest seaports. The harbor front is seeing more and more expansion. Never mind the boating, there's the paddling, there's the surfing. 365 days a year, you can either go get crab, prawn, salmon, and we're bringing regattas back to the lake. But if we work with the mentality that the people of Port Alberni have had for the last hundred years, Port Alberni will do well and we'll get over the few bumps we've hit. It's gonna shine again. <laughs>